Hello students, I welcome you to the second part of the novel where we are going to discuss themes, Anand's prose style and the possible solutions that the author gives in the course of his novel. Now after completing the characterization and understanding the major and the minor characters, I would like to ask you, do you find any contrast between the father and the son? The father character involved in this lesson is Laka and son's character involved in this lesson is Baka. Whereas Laka, he was a, his intention is that uh, the untouchability treatment is very common in this society. Whereas he is exactly opposite, that opposite to the Baka. Whereas the Baka was uh, humiliated by yes. the higher caste people. So that kind of uh, humiliation has been prevailed in the mindset of Baka, whereas that not prevailed in the case of Laka. Now let us go to the themes of the novel, the humanism in the novel, the realistic and sympathetic treatment of the poor in the novel. Let us now discuss with the themes of the novel, circumstances and attitudes. Anand's portrayal of exploitation is vivid and moving. It is rooted deeply in his own circumstances and attitudes. His contacts with the socially downtrodden and the low caste people in his childhood and adolescence. The untouchables of his novels were clearly known as living people by Anand before he rendered them into art. Anand has himself seen the misery, wretchedness and the squalor of the downtrodden in the Indian society. His heart and soul rebelled against the injustice being done to them. He had first seen his heroes as pieces of trembling humanity and loved them deeply from within before he sought to put them into his books as his characters. Hypocrisy and Injustice Anand also deals with hypocrisy and injustice in his novels. At an impressionable age, Anand was aware of the religious hypocrisy and bigotry in Indian society and of its injustice thriving on practices such as untouchability, feudalism, economic marginalization and the distinction between the haves and the have-nots. This awareness was sure to make him a strong critic of the basic elements of the Indian tradition. This is being reflected in his novels, Untouchable as well as The Coolie. Apart from this, he is also an academician who excelled in his academics and as a result could not shut his eyes and instead wanted to rebel, rebel against the existing practices that prevailed in the Hindu society through his writings. He wanted to educate his readers about the untouchability and the caste system, the evils of the Indian society through his novels. Exposing the Limitations Anand is at his best when he is exposing the limitations of the decayed Indian tradition and championing the cause of modernism as a cure for the ills of the Indian society. It is his greatness that he maintains a good balance when he does this. Anand is also at his best when he shows the modern Indian drawing both upon the strength of the native tradition and lessons learned from exposure through the Western tradition. Untouchable was inspired by author's childhood memory. Anand is unquestionably an innovator. He does not hesitate to turn the floodlights onto the darkest spots of Hinduism. The central theme of the novel is marginalization. Anand's concern for the underprivileged and downtrodden is a persuasive theme in much of his writings. This theme is highlighted in the novel Untouchable as well. It may be argued that the central issue is a philosophy of work. The structurally defined role of the marginalized sections of the society is redefined by the writers like Mulkraj Anand who are more of social reformers than mere novelists. 
A writer is generally expected to bring changes in the society and Anand does that very sincerely and efficiently. Anand tries to use English in a native way. The intention of the writer is to garner sympathy on the downtrodden, the poor, the untouchable and the marginalized. By doing so, Anand suffers resistance from both forces. The forces of the conventional society, which colonized the poor and the untouchables from a religio-socio-political angle. Anand illustrates the forces of double colonization and shows a humane and sympathetic attitude towards the marginalized. The untouchables are treated badly by the Indians and even by the British colonizers. Anand illustrates the forces of double colonization and shows a humane and sympathetic attitude towards the marginalized. By doing so, Anand was not only trying to represent India from a much more realistic perspective, but was trying to highlight a new concept of identity, which was emerging because of the dehumanizing condition generated by colonization. National identity characterized by sympathy. Anand tries to illustrate a national identity characterized by sympathy. He also attempts to champion the causes of the marginalized in a larger perspective so that a universal construct of the marginalized could be established and followed. It is for adherence to this indigenous value system that Anand could champion the causes of the marginalized in his fiction. Anand has exposed to social evil in its myriad manifestations and has evocatively presented different layers of human experience in his fiction. He introduces the economically marginalized, the downtrodden, the poor and the untouchables in his novels as his heroes and major characters. Anand, however, has a clear understanding of his own position within society that he belongs to the upper class. Hence, there is an economic and social distance between him and those that he sympathizes with. Initially, when you open the novel to read, you will clearly understand Anand's efficiency in describing minute details. He describes the house of Baka in a very interesting manner that the reader thinks that he is able to visualize or rather the reader visualizes it very clearly in front of him. The following passage from Untouchable gives a clear insight into Anand's prose style. Tananana Nantan rang the bells of a bullock cart behind him as like other pedestrians he was walking in the middle of the road. He jumped aside dragging his boots in the dust where thanks to the inefficiency of the municipal committee the pavement should have been but was not. The fine particles of dust that flew into his face as he walked and the creaking of the cartwheels in the deep ruts seemed to give him an intense pleasure. Anand's English in his fiction shows no mark of British chastity. Anand's use of typical Indian expressions, words and phrases and too many oriental references are some of the characteristic features of Anand's prose and make him feel Indian. His prose flow flawlessly. Anand deals with a complex Indian problem in a very magnificent manner. The novel is a mirror image of all the incidents that happen in the life of Baka. Like other writers, Anand never goes to the technique of flashback. Instead, he follows the unity of time, place and action. The whole scene is completed in one day. The entire novel is the experiences of Baka in a single day. The entire novel is depicted in Bulasar. Anand's writings are replete with typical Indian words and expressions that originate from Indian culture. His expressions like Ari, Vey, Hey, Sarkar, Sahib and Maharaj etc. all reveal his Indianness. It is apt to recollect M. K. Naik's words in this context. Colourful sphere words reeking of the rustic soil are so plentiful in Anand's fiction that whole dictionary of choice terms of abuse 
be compiled out of his work and they become a serious fault because of their overabundance and they expose Anand to the charge of vulgarity. These words range from simple words like prostitute, son of a swine, illegally be cotton, to the more complex words like cockite, sun and bow-legged scorpion. There are English words that become a part of Indian vocabulary that suffered pronunciation. Words like Jonterman, Lafton, Gorner, Gormant, Front are a few examples to quote. Anand's imagery is less colourful when compared to Raja Rao's as Anand's humanism is deeply rooted in the real world situations and demands closeness to the realities of the situations that are depicted. It is apt to quote Srinivas Iyengar. Anand is often undistinguished and seems to be too much in hurry. But the vitality of his creations, the variegated richness of his total comprehension and purposive energy of his narrative carry all before them. His notable marks are vitality and keen sense of actuality. Baka is depicted as a slave of slaves. In his work, Anand has drawn a realistic and sympathetic portrait of the poor in India. Anand's early work, particularly Untouchable, is a literature of protest and resentment. In his works, he shows sympathy towards the poor, the downtrodden and the untouchables. Baka is a universal representative of all untouchables. The stamp has been slapped on his face by upper caste Hindus. He is beaten for polluting them by his touch. It is the slap on Baka's face that immediately awakens in him the truth of the wretchedness of his humiliating and repelling existence as a sweeper. The untouchables as a class were cast out of the Fortai division of ancient Aryan society. The untouchables in ancient Indian society were expected to perform menial tasks for the upper class people. Of course, the poignant irony is that Baka is a slave of slaves. Realism In the portrayal of Baka, Anand has gone to the lowest depths of a social order where one has a clear glimpse of the fixed and stagnant reality resembling Dante's hell. Anand depicts the miserable plight of the untouchables through Baka. Anand is a novelist with a mission, writing with a purpose, the purpose being to arouse the social conscience and by that method to create in the affluent and powerful people a sense of responsibility towards the victims of injustice and marginalization. Baka has to announce his coming, posh posh, sweeper coming. Anand's realism is also seen in his use of literal translation of Punjabi exclamations and other words. Conflicts through the prominent characters like Baka and Laka, the author explodes the cruelty of caste conflict. Though this dangerous disease of caste conflict was on its summit before independence, it is still prevalent more or less in almost every state of India. Baka has worked years in the compound of British regiment. One day, he looks through the window and accidentally he touches a high caste Hindu. The man shouted at Baka, reminding Baka of his untouchability. The man abused Baka as Baka touched him without announcing his approach. The marginalized Baka's touch defiled the man. Soon a crowd gathered there to abuse Baka. The picture and the scene of jilebis in the marketplace also reveals the marginalization and the kind of torture that the untouchables faced in the society. Baka was not allowed to eat the jalebi that he has purchased by paying a high price. Accidentally, he touched a high caste Hindu and the jalebi fell down. Instead of sympathizing with Baka, there is a torment of abuse. People crowded there and started abusing Baka for coming without telling his approach. The Hindus who were born in higher caste stopped Baka from entering the temple and shouted, polluted, polluted, polluted. 
An untouchable is allowed to clean the courtyard in the temple and is he not allowed to pray to the deity in the temple? The novelist poses these questions to all his readers to think and to see to it that this casteism is eradicated in the Indian society. God is equal to all. The caste system plays a role in these aspects of life. Untouchable is a faithful transcript of the torment that the untouchables faced in the Indian society. Anand's birth in a high caste did not mar him in understanding the suffering of people, people of the low castes. Anand's father Lal Chand Anand served in the Indian army and rose to the position of a subedar. As a result, Anand as a child played and mixed freely with the children of the sweepers living in his father's regiment and such associations continued during his youth and boyhood as well. These early playmates and friends became with necessary imaginative altitude and amendments the protagonists of his novels. Anand himself acknowledges this in the special preface to second edition of Two Leaves and a Bat. Let us have a look at it. All these heroes, as the other men and women who had emerged in my novels and short stories, were dear to me because they were the reflections of the real people I had known during my childhood and youth. And I was only repaying the debt of gratitude. I owed them for much of the inspiration they had given me to mature into manhood when I began to interpret their lives in my writing, they were not mere phantoms. They were flesh of my flesh and blood of my blood and obsessed to me in the way in which certain human beings obsess an artist's soul. And I was doing no more than what a writer does when he seeks to interpret the truth from the realities of his life. Although one might look at the issue of casteism in its essential context of the vulgarities and misinterpretation of Hinduism, the question still remains. Will industrial progress and modernity liberate the bakas of society from the karmic obligation of cleaning human excreta and guarantee them basic human dignity and general acceptance in the social order without any reference to their birth or heredity? Ironically, baka was caught in the maze of the Indian caste system and cannot rebel. The untouchables are the socially isolated people who form the most vital part of a nation. But they led a very deplorable and a miserable life beyond description. Anand's creative use of the linguistic resources of the English language, his narrative techniques, his humanism, the symbolic relationship between art and culture are all clearly seen in Anand's novel, The Untouchable, and makes him an artist and a writer par excellence. After a jagged course of ups and downs, we come to the three solutions with which the book closes. The first solution is given through Hutchinson, the Salvationist. But though Baka is touched at hearing that Christ receives all men, irrespective of caste, he gets bored because the missionary cannot tell him who Christ is. Then follows the second solution with the effects of a crescendo, Gandhiji. Gandhiji too says that all Indians are equal and the account he gives of a Brahmin doing sweeper's work goes straight to the boy's heart. Hard upon this comes the third solution put in through the mouth of a modernist poet. It is very convincing. No God is needed to rescue an untouchable. No woes of self-sacrifice on the part of more fortunate Indians, but simply and solely the flush system. Introduce water closets and main drainage throughout India and all this wicked rubbish about untouchability will disappear. Anand leaves the reader to decide which will be the most effective solution or whether marginalized will remain where they are. Now, 
the author has given some possible solutions. What would be your possible solutions? And how do you think that you can reform the society? We have to educate, you see, for example, as educated people, we're supposed to be educate what is good, what is bad into the society. So such things, which comes from our attitude. Yes, we should be always aware of the existing evils of the society. We should know what these evils are, what are the reasons for these evils. And we should also know how to eradicate these evils in order to have a caste free and a wonderful society. Yes, ma'am. Yes. As students belonging to this generation, do you believe that these existed, these evils existed and still prevail in the society? Even today, also we have uh, uh, these problems, not only in uh, education and institutions and apart from that villages also. Because 1947 before, uh, as under British people, they are making a lots of problems. But even today, who has a higher authority people here, not only kind of Hindus and Brahmins, who has authorities, they are also making lots of problems today for STS and minority people. Untouchability means it's not like only for the sake of giving water and... Uh, uh, okay. Fulfilling their financial needs, that is what you want to say? Yes, ma'am. And educating all the citizens. Education is, has the power to emancipate all the evils existing in Indian society. That is what you want to convey? Yes, ma'am. Good. Any more solutions? Uh, the solution is that the realization should come from the inner self, ma'am. Each one have their own opinions, but if uh, they're, in a, they're in a thought that why should we listen to them? So if the realization comes from themselves, so then they'll believe in this. So that is the main solution, ma'am. Each one should get the realization. Then the problem may be solved. One of the two characters, women characters in the novels is Sohini. She was ill-treated by the priest. What do you say about this? Do you think that the girls are still ill-treated in Indian society? Girls need security. That doesn't mean uh, every girl must have a bodyguard. And uh, nowadays educated girls must, must be even knowing that, uh, uh, like behaving with the men in the society, they must be given equal rights. Like, uh, even if you have freedom to move with a boy, uh, there must be some limitations. An educated girl knows that and I think she must uh, tell the girls. So you mean to say that girls should be educated as well as the girls should also know their limitations? They Sweet. must know their limitations and pro At the end of the novel, we have seen how Baka places his hope for the future in a lavatory that will flush. Anand reiterates on several occasions his confidence in industrialization as a solution to poverty in India. Anand tends to explain regional customs, ceremonies for readers in other parts of the country and Indian customs, traditions for readers outside India. Often such explanations stand out of the context and strike a jarring note. The Indian novel in English is thus characterized by a variety of themes and techniques. It continues to change and adapt itself to the changing Indian environment. And it also brings in change in the existing minds of Indians. As a responsible artist, Anand suggests various answers to the human problems dealt with in his novel, refraining from imposition of any kind. The fact that Anand himself did not come from a low caste or a marginalized society or a marginalized section of the society. He understands that there is a distance between art and life. To him, a work of art is first a social event and the duty of a novelist is to create but not to determine. Hence, Anand projects image of India and her culture which is authentic and national rather than distorted, narrow and regional. At the end of the module, we have understood the major themes that the novelist tried to project it in the novel, his writing style and the possible solutions that the novelist gave through his different characters in the novels. Can you say what was the central issue of the novel? The central issue is the philosophy of work. The intention of the writer is to garner sympathy for the poor 
untouchable and the marginalized how can you say that anand is a committed writer anand is committed to see the society which is free from domination and exploitation and even social and political marginalities so he wants to exhibit he wants to explain and depict the indian customs and its traditions to the readers outside the india okay students at the end of the novel i hope that you have understood how much of trauma the untouchables faced in the indian society the novel's main idea is not merely to depict the problems of the untouchables but instead he wants his readers to understand their plight and revolt and fight against the evils that ex- that are existing in indian society i hope you all understood the novel thank you thank you once again